Agora TV. The world is thinking. This is the uh, Global Footprint Network uh, analysis. They're over in Oakland. They're a local group that basically looks at the demand that mankind makes on the planet in terms of land area in its most fundamental level. And so this green band in here, this is 1960, you can't read it, and 2005 at this end. Uh, the green is the quantity of land uh, that we have in crop production. It's agriculture. What's fascinating is the population has doubled on the planet since 1960, and yet the land area uh, that we depend on for our food has remained fairly constant, hasn't increased dramatically. Now, that's for all the wrong reasons, right? That's agribusiness. Agribusiness does work on that level, on the grossest level. The other consequences of it um, actually filter up to the top of this graph, so it gets complicated very quickly. Grazing land um, is also fairly constant. It's not, you're not seeing a doubling of these uh, ecological demands, takeaways from the planet's biosphere. Um, and that's, once again, also because of modern agriculture. Uh, animals are in feedlots. They're not grazing on open land anymore. And so that is constant. It looks good on this graph. The result is not so great. Um, forest footprint is material goods from forest lands. It's, it's, it's not uh, carbon sequestration. Um, the fishing area, actually, when you get into the numbers, actually has increased almost proportional. Built up land is a very small proponent, proportion when you look at the kind of mankind's footprint on the earth. But the big one here is energy. And this wedge represents the amount of forest land that would be necessary to absorb the amount of carbon that we're producing. So carbon isn't typically thought of as in acres, it's thought of in metric tons of carbon and, and carbon equivalent. But for these guys, they translated, well, how many acres of forest would it take to absorb the energy and the carbon that we're emitting into our atmosphere to ma maintain the homeostasis that we have enjoyed through most of human history? So you can see here, there's a quadrupling, um, which means that on a per capita basis, we all know this, energy consumption is what's driving it. But look at the difference. I mean, what I find astounding about these numbers is that this is one lifetime that this has happened, that we've gone from energy outstripping the Earth's capacity to absorb the carbon result um, from a fairly kind of reasonable component of the overall pie to this extraordinary overwhelming in one lifetime. But even more important, uh, they determined that the, the biosphere, the, uh, the biological capacity of the planet is right here at this red line, one Earth. Something happened in our lifetime. I'm looking out here and thinking that most people here <laughs> are closer to my age. Um, but in, in the mid-80s, we crossed the line. Something really dramatic has happened. We are now demanding more of the planet than the planet has to give us. And that's a fundamental change. And I think it calls on us to think about fundamental change on lots and lots of levels.